more ancient history jewelry stories. It's Friday, which means we're talking about birthstones. It's still April, so we're talking about diamonds. After last week's video, where we discussed a lot of the bad stuff in the diamond industry, I think a lot of people who hadn't already sworn off diamonds decided that they were never going to buy one. The purpose of the video definitely wasn't to sour anyone on diamonds, but I do think there are different ways to think about diamonds and different ways to go about purchasing them that are more ethically and sustainably sourced. To get into the different kinds of diamonds, I think we have to start with conversation about color. The most popular color of diamond in the jewelry industry is clear or colorless, which people will sometimes refer to as white. The value of this kind of diamond is determined by what the industry calls the four C's. Color, cut, clarity, and carat weight. These are the diamonds we were talking about in the last episode, the sort that have an artificially inflated value and were pushed by a giant marketing campaign. There are diamonds that are valuable because of their rarity, and not because of forced scarcity in the market. You may know about black diamonds and champagne diamonds, but diamonds actually come in a fairly wide variety of colors. The rarest color of diamond is red, and the few examples of red diamonds that have sold at auction have fetched a tremendous amount of money. In fact, one of the most famous red diamonds weighs under one carat and, and brought in almost a million dollars at auction. The second rarest color of diamond is blue. One of the most famous diamonds in the world is blue, the Hope Diamond. There is some debate as to whether pink is as rare as blue or if it is slightly less rare. What we know for sure is that it has higher market demand. Pink is the second most desirable color of diamond on the market, right after clear. Interestingly, while orange diamonds are fairly rare, they're also not very desirable, so they don't bring as high of a price as other colored diamonds. Next we have green diamonds, and green diamonds have an interesting quality. Unlike other colored diamonds, it's impossible to tell if green diamonds have been treated, so gem cutters will leave what's called a natural, a small section along the girdle of the stone that's unpolished and uncut, to provide proof that the stone is natural and untreated. We're getting to the most common colors of diamond. Second most common would be the clear and colorless diamonds. The color of these goes along a gradient from completely colorless into yellow. Yellow is the most common color of diamond found, and it exhibits an interesting phenomenon. Where light yellow diamonds are far less desirable and expensive than colorless, but fancy yellow diamonds, the ones with more saturated and vivid colors, are far more expensive. What about champagne and chocolate diamonds? Well, champagne and chocolate diamonds were completely worthless up until just about the 1980s, when the Argyle mine in Australia started finding not only the most valuable pink and red diamonds, but a whole lot of completely valueless yellow and brown diamonds. They decided to change the way that they were marketing these colors of diamond, and rebranded them with names like champagne, cognac, and chocolate, depending on the intensity of the brown. Last but not least, we have salt and pepper diamonds. These have become increasingly popular in the last two decades. Salt and pepper diamonds are simply clear, colorless, or yellow diamonds that have black and white inclusion, creating the look of salt and pepper flakes. These can range from clear with minimal inclusions to opaque. Honorable mention goes to black diamonds. Most gem quality black diamonds start out as brown diamonds that are treated to create that deep dark black color, or are in fact very heavily included salt and pepper diamonds, like the black Orlov. 